Okay, so I'm going to attempt to install OpenStack on just two nodes using Maz and Juju. Um, a lot of people have been asking about this recently, and I figured it'd best to just write a blog post and do a video about how I got it set up and running. Um, so for my hardware, I'm actually running... Uh, I've already installed Maz. Oh, snap. I've already installed Maz and Juju. Um, Maz has already been set up configured. I have three nodes enlisted. These are uh, Intel NUX. They're pretty awesome. They're also the same NUX we use in the orange boxes um, as part of the Cloud Jumpstart. So I'm just going to be using two of these. Uh, one's going to be used for the Juju Bootstrap node. So I'm going to run Juju Bootstrap. It's going to allocate one of these three nodes to be used as the Bootstrap node. Uh, and then I'm going to allocate a second node that's going to be my Compute node. Um, and I'm basically going to co-locate all the supporting services, MySQL, Keystone, um, uh, Nova Compute Controller, uh, everything else that's needed to get a bare OpenStack install set up are going to be on LXC containers on the Bootstrap node. And that way I can utilize the full force of the CPU and memory and hardware for my Compute node. And that way I'm not virtualizing within virtualization. So I'm just going to jump straight into it. Um, so I've already gotten my Maz environment configured in Juju. Uh, it's called Cloud9, so I'm just going to Juju Bootstrap. So this is going to take a few seconds to run. I'm waiting for blinking lights to come on. Oh, all right, blinking lights just came on. I know you can't see them, but uh, it's pretty exciting when lights power up on your rig. So let's take a look at the dashboard here. I know me using dev software. It's crazy. So one of my uh, two nodes has been allocated. So this is uh, NUC2 is going to be allocated and uses the bootstrap node. So we're going to wait for Juju to do its thing. It's going to get everything all fired up. Oh, I need to run my shuttle command, s shuttle uh, marco at cloud9.local. Um, I have mass set up like you should set up mass. It basically owns its own network and it owns its own subnet on my address, on my network. All right, cool, now I'm shuttled in. Um, so my home network is 10.0.0.1. The NUX run their own network, so I have a I have a, a, a separate node that's not a NUC that actually runs as my MAS controller. Um, and that controller has two NICs, one that faces the outside world and another one that's essentially bridged to um, bridged to a router that I have that all the NUCs are hooked up to. I'll include a picture of the setup on my blog post so you guys know exactly what I'm talking about when I say lights coming on and uh, this kind of crazy setup. So I ran S shuttle and most people will have to run S shuttle for a MAS environment. This basically sets up a pretty cool VPN slash proxy over SSH um, to the address here. So in this case it's my cloud9 public facing 10.0.0 address which is 10.0.0.0. 112 in my home environment um, and then all requests from my computer to go to the 10.0.1.0 network will be forwarded through this bridge and so I ought to be able to get to it. Um, so the NUC's still powering on. Um, some more talking while I'm waiting for this to come up. Uh, to make things go really fast I've selected to use the fast path installer uh, for Nux, the boot time to ready image is about five minutes, which is really awesome. Uh, by default, they use a standard installer, which can be quite slow, exceeding uh, setup times up to 10 minutes, where it does the traditional installation path. Um, I wouldn't be able to tell you much more details what the difference are between them, but they're pretty. Uh, it's pretty fast this way; it doesn't cause any problems. Um, so let's see where we are. Still attempting to connect. Hmm. 
Hmm, that's not what I expected. Ah, oh, that's why. So I'm gonna cheat and set my name server to my NUC. This should forward requests out anyway, so if I do a dig now... Yeah, so now when I do a dig, I actually get the IP address back. I should still be able to dig everything else in the world. Cool. So, that's another workaround. If you want to be able to resolve these uh, dynamic DNS names that are created by Maz, Maz is acting as its own DNS server, its own DHCP server, its own everything server. Um, it's actually really cool and really fun to use in large-scale data centers because it simplifies so much of those tasks and turning metal as a into well into a service. So we're still waiting. What this is, uh, Juju's basically looping through. And if we'd run the, the bootstrap command in debug mode, you'd see it just simply looping through, saying, "Okay, can we connect? No. All right, we'll sleep a second and try again." Um, when it finally is able to connect, it'll do the rest of the bootstrapping process which we should be seeing happening very soon. As my impatience grows, and we are now 10 minutes into this video, I'm going to see if I can beat it up a little more, shake out what's going on. Ah, there we go, 10 minute timeout. So it didn't come up in time. Well, it says it didn't come up in time. Ah, and of course it powered off. Uh, whenever it's a failed bootstrap, Juju will return it to the pool. So let me see what I'm doing wrong here. Um, good news is, well, the different news is, is I should be able to pass a timeout here. Let's bump this up a little longer. I should be doing another screen so you guys don't see my passwords everywhere. All right, I'm bumped up to 15 minutes. Let's do a Juju Bootstrap debug this time. Get a little more information. A lot of information is gonna be coming out flying at us. So, a whole bunch of stuff just happened. It looks like we have a new NUC assigned. Uh, Maz has been updated. Here are the nodes. We got NUC1 this time, and it powered on. Fantastic. All right, now we enter the waiting game. So it's still looping through, waiting for SSH to come up. So it's responding to pings, which is a good sign. Let's see if we actually ping it from the outside world. We can't. I've done something horribly wrong in this bridging here. Well, oh, it was, it worked. It was working. Son of a gun. It was doing its thing like it was supposed to. 
And I killed it when I killed the bridge. Fantastic. Thank you. Good job, Marco. Good God. Of course, the machine's not up anymore, so I can't ping it from here. Whatever. We're going to look past that for a minute. And we're going to bootstrap again. And this time I'm going to patiently wait for it to either not finish. I'm just going to patiently wait. Okay. So, this is the part where I fast forward the next one. Uh, so Juju's still patiently waiting for its turn to connect to it. Uh, we still have an active, good running connection. Good. The machine is up. Doesn't matter. Does not matter. Juju's finishing its install. So it started at six minutes after, and then we waited a few minutes. So really nine minutes after. So two and a half minutes we had a, a node go from nothing on it to a Ubuntu operating system. Pretty badass, not gonna lie. Love Maz. Um, <laughs> I love Maz when I can remember how to use it properly. Um, so we're gonna wait for this to finish now. Basically it's going to do a bunch of cloud and itty stuff. Uh, install the baseline tools, things like this here, like run this command which sets up some stuff and do some other things that are important for the setting of bootstrap node. Do bootstrap nodey things. Um, technical terms, it's installing GGDB, which is backed by MongoDB right now. Uh, it's installing the agent state and the uh, the general state server and the agent that drives the state server. So uh, this will keep track of the entire deployment we're working on. So give it a few seconds. It's running app get update, app get upgrade. Um, I have a package mirror running. So these should be pretty quick transactions once we've done them once, so subsequent nodes will come up rather quickly. Um, and again, because I am so impatient, we can actually watch this log and see what's going on. Get out of here. SSH Ubuntu at 10.0.1.3. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I definitely want to connect to that. Totally want to connect to that. Let's totally tail this file. Heh <laughs> that's cool. Gonna need a space between there. All right, so here's what it's doing. It is downloading core utils. It's pretty, uh, pretty tame. Oh, so yeah, it looks like my templates that I use for these machines are a little out of date. That's 227 packages to be upgraded. Good gracious, that's a lot of packages. And it is still apt getting stuff. So this is going to take a little bit of time. This is again where Marco cuts the video, like, pretend like this wasn't supposed to happen. Um, Alright, so we see so we moved on from the CloudNet. Now it's doing its own installation of its own stuff. So CloudNet ran an upgrade, so we have a base, fresh, trusty as of today, that moment when this command was run. So we have the latest of the greatest of Ubuntu. Now we're installing the few extra pieces that Juju needs. Uh, Git curl, CPU checker, bridge utils for networking, our syslog, GNU tool, um, TLS, which is just for remote syslog stuff. Then we grab our tools from our trusty tools bucket, and then finally we finish starting everything. Everything runs. The bootstrap command has completed successfully. Now, it took a little bit of time. Again, we launched this at uh, six minutes after, and then we didn't actually power the knuck on until nine minutes after. So really, nine minutes to 20 minutes after. That's about 11 minutes from start to finish for this bootstrap node. We did have to download a lot of packages. Um, odds are the next couple machines will be a lot shorter. Uh, so what's next, you may ask. Uh, cool, so this is all done. I'm gonna back out of this machine slowly, door to door. No one saw anything there. So let's run Juju status. Let's see what we have running. 
we have one machine, machine zero. It says agent state down, which is a little deceiving. You may think, oh goodness, we have to do this whole process again. It's fine. Run it again. Agent state is started. Um, it's just in the process of booting up and doing everything. So the process is running. It's just getting the server kind of online. It's doing initial database inventory, all that stuff that has to happen uh, for things to run appropriately. So it has our instance ID. This is our node, some crazy UUID, no big deal. Um, the real important thing is DNS name, it's Nux Zero Master, as we all remember from earlier. Everything is started, everything's good to go. Now, what I'm going to do is, I'm going to do a couple of things. The first thing I'm going to run is Juju Add Machine. Um, now, you're probably asking, why? What does this command do? Um, well, Juju Help Add Machine will tell us exactly what it is doing. So, this will start a new empty machine or container or add a container to a machine. Um, essentially, this precedes a machine for use. So, you know that whole long process of having to wait for, you know, a couple minutes for the machine to come up? We can, I can say, I know I'm going to use 12 machines in my deployment. I can just run um, juju add machine 12 times. And I'll be able to list hardware for me to use. So if I do juju add machine, it says create a machine one. Let's run juju status. We see that it's still pending. So right now we told our bootstrap node, hey, I need another machine. Go get me one. So it then went and talked to Maz and said, okay, NUC2 is the machine you're getting. Here we go. We have uh, two allocated nodes. One node is still queued. That node we're not going to use. NUC1 will remain unused for the rest of this demo to show OpenStack running on just two pieces of hardware. Um, but this will make installing the last piece of OpenStack really fast. So double check. Hey, lights are on. That's good. So let's take a little while. Let's go through the same process in about the next five minutes or so. We'll see uh, this go to start it and it'll be ready to use. But in the meantime, we can actually progress on from there. So I'm going to do the next step, which is Juju deploy. 2-0 Juju GUI. So the Juju GUI is the graphical user interface component for Juju. It's an optional install. Uh, again, it's in charm format, so you can actually deploy it into your environment and then you orchestrate your environment from within it. Uh, what's fantastic though is that I'm using this deploy to command. So what this is saying is instead of giving me a whole other machine, just put it on node zero. Now this form of, oh, we actually run the command so we can get it going while I'm talking. This, this command here is dangerous. It's a very dangerous command. Um, the Juju GUI is designed to be run in what we call this Hulk Smash mode um, on Bootstrap Node 0. It's, it has no collisions with the Juju Bootstrap Node. It has no problems at all running on there. Uh, so by doing this, we can safely co-locate Juju GUI and the Bootstrap Node on the same surface. Now... There's nothing to stop me from running this again, but saying, you know, renaming Juju GUI to other GUI, and suddenly we'll have this crazy collision. Two Juju GUIs on the same machine will be battling it out for file pads, resources, things will go haywire. Uh, this is why we call it Hulk Smash mode. Juju does it without any regard to your data or sanity. It is a very powerful uh, hammer for oftentimes a very small nail. Uh, so to combat this, to do Density, without having to worry about collisions, the Juju has this idea of containerization. So we can set services inside of KVM containers or inside of LXC containers in existing nodes. So they'll have their own containerized, compartmentalized running operating system in an existing node, virtualizing essentially within whatever you're using. So if you do this, for instance, on Amazon or HP Cloud or, or Azure or any of the other public clouds that we support, you'll be running virtual containers inside of a virtualized machine on top of their hardware. Usually not that bad, especially with LXC, very lightweight containerization technology. Uh, we really love it within the Juju team and Canonical itself. So let's run Juju status, see what we got going. Um, Juju GUI, it's assigned to NUC0. It is still pending, so it's just going through its install phase. And it started. That was a very quick pending to start it. If I copy this URL and paste it into uh, here, no, I, that's not what I want to Google. Come on, Google. That's definitely a fully qualified domain name. It uses the self-signed certificate, so you're going to have to accept 
that you're using a self-signed certificate and says, okay, it's unsafe, but I trust the Juju GUI. I know I deployed it. It's in my internal network. I doubt there's a man in the middle listening. Uh, they need to type your password in. So you're probably thinking, good, where's this password? Um, if you didn't explicitly set an admin password in your environment's YAML file, which I did not, you'll have to actually look for it in, um, does it tell you where to do it? Yeah, look for it in this file. So if we just run head against this file here, our password is this long seemingly SHA one sum login. Boom. Uh, no thank you. I know how to use the GUI. It's a fantastic tool though. Um, so we click here, it says, oh, that's fine. And we put this here. So now we have a Juju GUI and nothing else deployed. Now, very soon, probably very soon after this video is actually published, there will become a machine view in the GUI. And the machine view basically allows you to, I'm going to, I'm sure the GUI team is going to hate me for doing this. Um, the machine view allows you to stage, add machines and manage them and apply services to machines within the GUI itself. So all of this crazy deploy to stuff we've been doing over here, we'll be able to do in the GUI very soon. So we see that we have machine zero and one, this service is on there. We can actually add more machines, add containers to machines, build our infrastructure as dense as, or as sparsely populated as we want, and then commit and deploy that. So we do almost transactional a level of transaction against your environment where you can stage, make a, make things up while actually committing them to your environment. It's very cool stuff, uh, very slick that the GUI team has been working on doing. But back to reality, what we currently have is here. So we're going to do everything from the command line, but I'm going to leave the GUI so we can see them actually happening in real time. The GUI is just way better looking than the command line. I know a lot of you guys are command line veterans, but let's face it. This looks just awesome, just sexy. Um, all right, so back here, do do do. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is start deploying some services. So I know I need MySQL. Gg deploy MySQL. But I'm not going to deploy MySQL. I'm going to deploy to LXC on machine zero. Run it. So back of the GUI, boom. It all refreshes in real time. It's so fantastic. I have MySQL. It looks just like a regular service, like everything else. It has no real semblance or really care in the world that it's actually deployed to an LXC container on the Bootstrap node. Run Juju status, we see that I still only have two machines, machine zero and machine one. The, the Maz GUI will back me up on this. Not that one. This one here. Only NUC2 and NUC0 are allotted to me. No NUC1. Not even in this whole equation here. Um, but if you, if you look at Juju's status output, let's pipe it to less, we'll see that we have a container on um, machine zero, LXC slash zero, which is being spun up right now. So it's essentially um, cloning down the trusty image, putting it in an LXC container, and spinning it up on that node. Um, going down here. So the Juju GUI is running. This is fine. My SQL is still pending, still waiting for the machine to come up. That's cool. Um, Everything in Juju is all orchestrated for you. So what's great about using Juju is even though things aren't ready, you can still send more commands and events to be orchestrated by Juju. It'll just handle them when Juju's ready to handle them. So we also need Keystone. We definitely need Keystone. I'm fairly certain of it. Um, and we're going to need Nova... Cloud controller. Yep. Um, this is where my knowledge of OpenStack falls flat on its face. Those are the three things I know we need uh, in addition to Nova Compute. Um, yeah, definitely going to need... Rabbit of Q server for sure. Oh, and how could I forget? We need a dashboard.
and I think that's it. So we don't have any Swift um, for storage, and we don't have Ceph Black back images. We don't even have Cinder. Uh, we're probably gonna need Cinder actually. Let's deploy Cinder. And of course, while this is all going on, this is getting loaded up with more and more services. MySQL is deployed, it's green. Awesome container came up. Keystone will probably come up shortly. We have Cloud Controller, Glance, RabbitMQ Server, OpenStack Dashboard, and Cinder. And I think that's it. I'm not going to deploy Neutron Gateway. Um, because Neutron Gateway doesn't really like being an LXC. You have to kind of preset up that machine, dual NICs, and all that crazy stuff. Um, so I think we can get away with not having Neutron Gateway set up. So my very last thing I want to do is I want to deploy Nova Compute, which is I go I'm going to need um, in order to spin up VMs. That's my compute node. So let's do a Juju status real quickly. It's going to get kind of long, uh, but we see we have containers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, where... 0 through 4 are up and running. Um, 5 and 6 are still coming online. They'll be there shortly. Um, we're getting there. And then we have this machine 1 that we added previously that should be good to go. It's already up and rocking and rolling. Uh, lights blaring, etc. So what I'm going to do is run juju deploy nova compute. Um, what that'll do is since we pre-fed the machine It'll actually consume the next machine. We didn't use the deploy to flag. We just used deploy. So if we do juju status nova compute, uh, we see that it got assigned machine two, which in this case was NUC one, which is what we set aside to be. Wait, 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 hold on. That's not right. Uh, it didn't use the machine it was supposed to. Hold on. Juju remove. All right, I just unallocated NUC2. So we still have our two NUC system. My whole plan to do this pre-allocation fell in its place. I don't know why. I'm using a Juju dev version. I need to look and see if this is a problem. And if it is, I need to ping some people on the core team and file a bug. Um, but it should have used that node because it was unallocated. It should have used the next node that was allotted to it. Um, that makes me sad that it didn't for this demo, but we'll pretend like that didn't happen. Besides, it looks way better having NUC0, NUC1, and NUC2 not being used. That's obviously the reason why this failed, uh, to make that demo look a little prettier. So, it's going to take a little while for Nova the Compute to come back up, but most everything else has already started. It's, it's running. Um, that was awfully quick considering what we were doing at the end of the day. So, it looks like Keystone Glance, Dashboard are up, RabbitMQ server is up. Cinder and Nova computer still waiting. Uh, they were the last ones that we spun up, so it'll take a little bit of time to do what it needs to do. So let's see. Keystone, I know Keystone connects to MySQL. That's MySQL backed for its database stuff. And then Keystone basically connects to everything else, it seems. Um, it definitely connects to the OpenStack dashboard. Hello. And let's see what else it needs to connect to. So the cloud controller is also backed by MySQL. Let's zoom in a little bit. Zoom, enhance. Zoom, enhance. So let's see, cloud controller. Build relation to MySQL. Uh, cloud controller also connects to RabbitMQ server. I have such a hard time in this dev version of Chrome clicking on things. Where's Rabbit? There it is. This down over here. Uh, it also connects to Glance for the image management. Please. Dang it. Every time it pops up, I click too fast. Come on. 
uh, glance, we'll glance down over here. Uh, it also connects to Keystone, obviously. And then we connect Nova Compute to the Cloud Controller. Obviously, they kind of manage each other there. Um, notice that even though Nova Compute isn't done yet, it's still pending, it's not even up yet, we can still build these relations. Juju does all the orchestration for us. It's, Juju is a wonderful tool. Um, Nova Compute also needs to connect to MySQL. Come on, give me what I want. Bingo. Glance needs to go to MySQL as well. Glance needs to go to Keystone. And suddenly our topology gets very messy. Glance to Cinder. Cinder to MySQL. Cinder to RapidMQ server. And the topology grows. <laughs> Cinder to Nova Cloud Controller. Cinder to Keystone. Basically, everything connects to MySQL and Keystone and then something else. All right. And I think this will do for what we need to be done. So the real test is if this works or not. Let's open up Keystone. Uh, change the settings. Let's see. Admin password is um, look good save these changes so if I actually go to OpenStack dashboard expose the surface of the outside world click on units and then open up this IP address in my browser yes proceed hmm, that's weird oh that's definitely weird I think it's what slash horizon there we go. So username is admin, password is hmm. Password is hello demo. Aha! We have an OpenStack dashboard. Um Nova Compute actually finally came up. Everything is running, which is fantastic, on two nodes. Let's do a Juju status. Let's walk through it real quickly in the less. 
So we got Machine Zero. It's got LXC containers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. These are all LXC isolated machines that are running all supporting services for OpenStack. We've got a Machine 2 that's running. It's a complete NUC, and that's dedicated to our Nova Compute. So Cinder has all these relations connected. It is in a started state. Glance, all these services connected in a started state. GUI, no one cares about the GUI, uh, although it rocks. Keystone, all these services connected. MySQL, all the services connected to it. And then Nova Cloud Controller, all the services connected to it. And then Nova Compute on its own node running. And the OpenStack dashboard, RabbitMQ server, all these are running and running properly. Um, this is our infrastructure. Of course, it does not really show you the full thing. I'm going to go back. So let's put some stuff here. I don't really think there's any way to reorganize this to make it look any prettier. But this network of stuff is now running. Um, let's see if we can build a VM. This will be a real test, I guess. So let's let's see where we are on time. Um, it looks like we are one hour into filming, barring ten minutes of me screwing around. Another ten minutes of me screwing around some more and breaking things. But in less than an hour, I've got two nodes running, um, up and running, two just hardware nodes, OpenStack fully deployed, uh, I'll be a very minimum OpenStack. This is something you would launch into production the next day. You're missing things like, uh, it's not HA at all. If I lose any one of these two nodes, I lose everything, which is not good. Um, it's missing things like uh, Neutron for, for managing networking. It's missing... Uh, um, Swift, which is the images, the 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 object store, um, and really we recommend using Ceph for for backing all the 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 services that require disk. So backing Swift and backing Glance with Ceph, which will give you a far better performance in uh, in distributed disks. But we should have a hypervisor. No, it doesn't show us any hypervisors. Host aggregates. Maybe I missed a relation. Let's see. Nova Compute attaches to... Ah, Nova Compute attaches to MySQL and a bunch of other things. I don't think I did that. Uh, yeah, Nova Compute also attaches to RapidMQ server. Oh, come on, guy. Under AMPQ. And then we could be also easy to attach the glance to get the images out. Of course. And I think that's it. So we'll have to wait a few minutes for the relationships to settle. We should have it pop up in the hypervisor. There it is! Okay. So this is what's utterly fantastic about Juju is I forgot to connect things together. I didn't I didn't even know. But because I forgot to do that, Juju was like, okay, I'm not ready yet. I can't advertise myself as a hypervisor. I don't know where my images are in Glance. I don't even know where my 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 queuing service is. I have no nothing. You make those connections, Juju has all the logic encapsulated in charms to figure that out when it's ready and when it is ready to advertise itself. So now I have um a ton of memory, no VCPUs using at all. I've got none of my disk queues. Let's launch some VMs now. So I can go to instances, and it gets even better. If I had deployed Swift, uh, I guess we could probably deploy Swift, but I'm not gonna try in this demo. Um, we can actually then connect Juju to this OpenStack instance and drive my NUC2 with OpenStack. Or, what's even better, is I could scale 
my Nova compute out and use my next node, my third node, and have another hypervisor at it that I can distribute my load against. Um, that's these things are all done with Juju, and it's really great at managing this at the bare metal level with Mass and Juju to scale out and manage your OpenStack install. But we're doing condensed two nodes. Um, let's see what we have for flavors. Those are cool images. Let's see if we have images. No images. I'm pretty sure we need to create an image. This will be Ubuntu Trusty 12.04 Cloud. Uh, let's do image location, and these are in cloud images.ubuntu.com. Let's go to trusty current all the way at the bottom. Do sixty four bits. Actually, we just do this here. What the heck's the difference between this and this? I probably have done this wrong, but we'll see what happens. So I'm going to skip actually showing you this portion of launching it. I assume once you have OpenStack installed, you can manage adding images and launching instances yourself. Um, this does work. Hypervisors are all located here appropriately. Um, what I am going to do, though, is show you just one last thing of Juju is kind of how awesome the scaling is. So I'm going to do it from the from the GUI, but this is also can be done from the CLI. So essentially, I'm going to open this up and say I want two units of Nova Compute. Confirmed. So the bar is going to change, the C is going to shift, and I'll have a pending unit and a done unit. I go back to my nodes here and refresh. NUC2 was allocated to root. Um, so I'm going past my two node demo. Yes, I know. Um, this is now pending. In about two to three minutes, when that machine comes online and is fully booted and installs Nova Compute, Juju will take care of all the orchestration bits again. It'll know to connect it to, um, it'll know to connect it back to the cloud controller, to MySQL, to um, Rabbit and Q server, and to Glance. And then once it does that, it'll come online and it'll enlist itself as a hypervisor, and I can deploy uh, more instances to it. So we'll wait a second for this to finish its setup. Uh, in the meantime, we can see how my image is going. Still saving it, so it's downloading the image from the Cloud Images archive, and then it'll do what it needs to there. So I'm going to move over the command line. I'm going to run Juju status again. I want to just see what Juju status for Nova Compute is. Still pending. This node hasn't come online yet, so it's still doing the installation portions of it. Okay, so it looks like we have an image added. The trusty 12 point... Why did I put 12.04? Goodness, I am all over the place tonight. Let's do... Uh, this is actually 14.04. Trusty tar. Cool, image updated. I'm going to go ahead and launch an instance. Except I can't. Oh, project. 
instances launch that instance availability zone is the regular one this is going to be called test let's make it an m1.small one instance boot from image trusty tar what, where'd it go? blurg okay let's do this one more time instance name is testing m1.small one image boot from trusty tar all right build a key pair put the public key in here This is my idrsa.pub. Import that key pair there. Cool. That's all I want to do. Just launch this instance. So it's building, spawning, yada yada. Things are happening. Good times are occurring. Let's go back to our juju. The other node is the other NUC has started. Let's see where we are in the building phase. Oh, it just ticked over. So if we go to hypervisors, NUC2.master is now a hypervisor. I'm using one of my eight vCPUs, um, three of the 30 gigs I have available, and only 20 gigs of the 218 gigs, this space on each. Um, let's go back to instances. It's running, everything's good, looks good to go. Um, let's pop it open. Let's see where is its IP address. Um, no IP addresses, this might be because I don't have Nova running. Let me see if I can. I might need actually to put Nova Compute on here for this to work properly. I'm not entirely certain now. I thought I could be clever and not use it. Let's go back and see if I can give it a floating IP. Yeah, no, it can't because this doesn't have... This is what we ended up with. We were able to launch instances. We were able to import images. We were able to do everything that we needed to do to prove an instance is running here. Uh, there might be some additional stuff you need for networking. I'm not quite sure. I'm going to look into that and update my blog post as I see fit. But this is everything you need. That's the bolts from getting started. I have two physical pieces of hardware, and I have Maz and Juju working and installed. How do I show a proof of concept OpenStack deployment um, using these two pieces of hardware. This is summarized simply by using Juju to deploy two flag, co-locating all the supporting services onto the one machine that you bootstrap with Juju, and then using your other piece of physical hardware to run Nova Compute. Uh, and that's it.